I'm Catherine Alexander, founder of Bridge to Partnership. And today, that's what I want to talk about, is Bridge to Partnership. What does that mean? What does partnership really mean, actually? And why should you care? I've spent my whole life trying to create partnerships with people, and I'm surprised at how rarely that's really possible. Few people understand the role of partnership in their life, and I think that's a foundational understanding to actually be effective in your life or in your business or in your marriage or in your family. <laughs> we think of ourselves as autonomous individuals. We're an individualistic society, right? Everybody does their own thing. Not really. You actually do things in relationship. And if you're not in relationship, you're not very effective. And the strengths of your relationships have to do with whether or not you feel both parties in the relationship feel equally valued and equally valuable. And that's really my de definition of partnership, where two entities, whether they're human beings, spirits, businesses, <laughs> come together with shared values, shared appreciation, and contribute to a shared success, whatever that looks like. It is really hard to partner. And often, the hardest place to partner is with yourself. How often have you found yourself dismissing what you thought? Or later said, oh, I knew I should have done it. And the thought passed your mind, and you dismissed it. So part of partnership a foundational piece of partnership has to do with trust. So trust starts by trusting yourself. If you don't trust yourself, you really can't trust anybody else. So we spend half our life um, dissing ourselves. <laughs> Either saying things, that, oh, we'd like to do, but we'll never will do. Oh, yeah, let's go to the show. Or, you know, I really want to get together with you. Um, and we do but we don't. <laughs> so every time you tell yourself one of those stories, you're also telling yourself that you well, can't really be trusted with that. I mean, I had a hard lesson on that with my kids. I, oh yeah, we're going to go to the park today. Things would come up and we couldn't. Um, I understood that, but for them, I was lying. But you said, you said we were going to go. And I learned not to promise unless I actually knew I was going to complete that promise. That's a big lesson, actually. So listen to your own self-talk. How much do you tell yourself that you really know you're not going to do, that you hope or want or should do, but you're not really going to? So stop that. Trust yourself. Learn what that means to be honest with yourself and dependable to yourself. <laughs> and then you can be honest and dependable to others. Sort of simple, isn't it? <laughs> but it's hard. I mean, it's really hard. Um, I still, I practice every day and I get thoughts in my head. And I'm learning to do it, not to argue with myself. A great example for me is getting dressed. Oh, what should I wear? Oh, let's do this. Then I dismiss it. I have learned not to do that. If it comes through my mind, I take it. I trust it. I value it. I act on it. When I do that, things are fine and easy, actually. I mean, it just flows. It all works out. And I'm not stressing over it. I'm not wasting any energy thinking about it. Um, but when I diss that, when I dismiss what I hear, um, what I know, it doesn't work. It's never very nice. So partnership starts with self. When you want to partner with others, though, there's a discernment that has to take place. As you need to discern for yourself what's true, what you're really going to do, versus what you want to do or would like to do or should do. Understanding character in others is a real key piece 
to being able to partner effectively. And I'm astonished at how we've seemed to ignore character. Character was a huge conversation, oh, 50 years ago or more, probably more now, maybe 75 years ago <laughs> or 100. There were all sorts of aphorisms, you know, stitch in time saves nine, um, early bird gets the worm, all these kinds of things that were public speak, that were common knowledge, that we shared with each other all the time, which validated and created a context for how to be successful in life. And we were encouraging each other and ourselves by saying those things to do them, um, to understand what, it, what actions we had to do to be successful in life. And we have stopped that conversation. We don't have it anymore. So people are floundering, trying to understand what it takes, what we should pay attention to, um, and if we don't understand character, then we get caught in all those ephemeral and illusionary external things like clothes and cars and watches and perceived bank accounts and all that kind of stuff, status and all that, because we don't have anything else to evaluate a person from or by. I think that's why people take insist on resumes um, in some cases and don't even do interviews because they trust the paper more than they trust themselves. They want proof over here. It's proof in quotes because paper doesn't tell you anything. People can have lots of education and lots of work experience and still not fit or be available to partner with in the way that's needed by you or the organization. So character is a really key piece, understanding how to discern um, the character of a person, paying attention to that kind of thing. The other place that's awkward, I think, for us when we partner with others is language. We don't use partnership language. We use directive language. We use controlling language. <laughs> but we don't use partnership language. And for me, that's what the in the three levels of conversation, which I've talked about at different times, um, which is foundational to conversational intelligence. The third level is transformational, but it's transformational because it opens up relationships between people. It keeps you in your prefrontal cortex where you're all about connecting, and it opens up the possibility that you can actually engage with each other. It's a way of affirming the value of the other party, of being curious and interested, engaged with that other party, and working together, seeking ways to work together. When you seek, when you ask, when you are in this open place, then people can come in. They can move forward into relationship with you. When you demand or call or pull or insist, then people's response back away and protect them. So learning to open and allow people to move forward into partnership is one of the skills of creating good and effective and fun partnerships. When partnerships are strong, and I want you to think about this in terms of your relation, your other relationships in your life, even your personal relationships, your spouse or significant other. So often there's not a trust there, and so we demand and insist and, and grab at the other person. And all that does is create resistance. I mean, how would you feel? You don't want to be grabbed at. <laughs> you don't. I, when that happens to me, I mean, I'm, there's an instant resistance. Um, you just don't know where it's going or what it's all about it, and you're losing control. So you just you want to step back and, and grab control. Um, and that's not a partnership situation. So learning to be open and receptive, learning to speak in a way, to talk in a way that allows you to create a space for the other person to move into is one of the ways to create really exciting partnerships. 
What do you do with the partnership? Think about that. What, what, why? Why would you want a partnership? What's the purpose? What are you going to do? I mean, we want relationships with people. But we can have relationships that are comfortable, um, that give us solace, that make us feel we're not alone, um, that validate us, you know, flatter us, tell us how wonderful we are. It's always nice to hear compliments and that kind of stuff. But are those real partnerships? For me, a partnership really has to do with being able to take action, to do something together. And it's the creation, the co-creation part of it, that's really the most satisfying for me. I mean, that was one of my issues with my marriage, in fact. Um, I had a really nice guy. He had tremendous potential, and he absolutely wouldn't use any of it. So our life consisted of going to work, coming home, having dinner, watching television, getting up, going to work, coming home. Watch. I mean, that's no life. And he didn't want to do anything or even to talk about it. <laughs> we couldn't even build dreams. So there was no partnership. There were just two people in the same house doing things together. So it's nice to have somebody else in the house for sure. It's nice not to be lonesome, although when there's no real interchange, it is kind of lonely even if there's a presence there. So partnerships are interesting, aren't they? Lots of dynamics, lots of possibilities. But it really comes down to partnering with yourself, to being able to trust yourself, and then to being able to trust others. And that's no small feat. It's not something that you can take for granted. You have to really believe it. If you can't ask hard questions of each other, there's no trust. There's blind faith. Oh, yeah, it'll be all right. <laughs> but no trust. If you can't make yourself secure by asking the questions on your mind, there's no trust. There's no real partnership with that other person. Being dismissive unavailable, all those things we do to protect ourselves are all indicators of distrust. And it could be that you're not trusting yourself and therefore you can't trust the other person, but that's not how it seems. The other person always thinks you don't trust them. So you first trust yourself, then you can trust others. And that's why a coach is important. It's nice to say these things, but you don't always catch yourself not doing them. And so a coach can really reflect back to you, ask you questions, give you a space to reflect on. What are you really doing? How are you really feeling about yourself or the people you're working with? It's an interesting journey. It's a wonderful journey to take with somebody. And a coach is a good person to take that with. So I look forward to talking with you. Hope this has been helpful. Give me a ring. Love to chat.